on Mangu local government area a day after the government declared curfew for the president, President Bola Tunubu, jets out of Nigeria for France. And we're seeing more aspirants in the Edo APC going to obtain nomination from the spite. The arrangement to screen out out of the 29 aspirants who have obtained firms tonight. We're getting insight into why some of the aspirants have despised that directive. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. I'm Sean Okimaloe in Abuja. And this is Politics Today on China's television. Let's begin tonight by letting you know that President Bola Tinubu has left Nigeria, departed the country today on a private visit to uh, Paris in France. A special advisor to the president on uh, media and publicity, Julian Gilale, released a statement earlier to review that the president has departed the country earlier today. The statement asks that President Tinubu will return to the country in the first week of February. The president had on Tuesday night held a bilateral meeting with the American Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, at a presidential villa. It was only yesterday that the governor of Plateau State, Governor Caleb Mufuang, declared a curfew on Mangu local government because of some of the attacks that were experienced uh, two days ago in that uh, local government area. The government decided that the coffee was necessary because of the deteriorating situation of security in the area. And now today, the governor had come out in a state broadcast to address the situation as more attacks have been experienced in Mangu local government. We now can see area surveillance there now deployed to the area to monitor the situation. And gunshots have been heard uh, as uh, the attackers were being uh, pursued out of the local government area. And here is a portion of Governor Caleb Mufti Wang's uh, state address earlier today. Today become the synosure of the whole nation and indeed the world for the wrong reasons. These unprovoked and simultaneous attacks in different villages were clearly premeditated and coordinated. This series of attacks on our people are a clear case of criminality, insurgency, and terrorism, and must be seen and handled in that manner if we must succeed in halting this wanton destruction of lives and property. For the avoidance of doubt, it is a misrepresentation of facts to describe these needless and unprovoked attacks on our people as a farmer had a clash, as has always been the traditional narrative. Let us call a spade a spade. This is simple genocide. Let me use this medium again to commiserate with my dear people of Plateau State on these monumental killings, especially their all right, that's Governor Caleb Muswang addressing this situation in a state broadcast earlier today. Tonight, our attention is on Edo State. More of the activities in the APC, most of the heavyweights in the APC are now despising the screening process in the party. The Honorable... Um, uh, Julius, the over uh, committee, which has pruned down the number from 29, uh, had cut it down to about six, but some of the heavyweights are now going ahead despite that process. We'll be hearing from one of the uh, frontline candidates today. And of course, we'll be hearing also from a former minister on the state of the nation, some of the issues that we need to know in the country tonight. So stick around with me, everyone. Let's check out some of your political roundup stories first.
Biondo State Governor, Mr. Lokiaye Datiwa, has announced the selection of Mr. Olayide Adelami for the position of Deputy Governor. Adelami, who hails from Owo, the hometown of the late Governor Rutimi Akirdulu, is a former Deputy Clerk of the National Assembly. The name of the Deputy Governor nominee has been transmitted to the Ondo State House of Assembly for approval. Earlier today, the Governor sacked all commissioners, senior special assistants, and special assistants appointed by Akiridulu and directed them to immediately hand over to the permanent secretaries or the most senior administrative officers in their respective offices. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wale Edu, believes Nigeria must make necessary sacrifices to generate adequate revenues to reduce its current high deficit budget financing as well as reduce borrowing. Mr. Edun was speaking at a meeting organized by the Federal Inland Revenue Service in Abuja. He says the country cannot rely on borrowing to fund its national budget. Cheap money, virtually free money, 1%, 2% for 40 years. It is given as a seal of approval for the policies of the government of the day. The immediate past governor of Anambra State, Mr. Willie Obiano, has pleaded not guilty to the nine-count charge of money laundering preferred against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The former governor was arraigned today before Justice Iyang Ekwo of the Federal High Court, Abuja, over the alleged money laundering of four billion naira. Counsel to the prosecution, Mr. Silvanus Tahir, says he has 15 witnesses lined up to testify against the former governor. Three new judges of the Ogun State High Court and Customary Court of Appeal have been sworn in by Governor Dakwa Biodun towards strengthening the judicial sector and quick dispensation of justice. At a ceremony in Abelkota, the state capital, Governor Dakwa Biodun charged them to always uphold the fundamental principle of the rule of law and shun temptations. He also charged them to maintain a high degree of integrity in discharging their duties as the last hope of the masses for equity, fairness and justice. You accept the profound responsibility to uphold justice, preserve the customs of our people, and ensure that the principle of fairness and equity prevail in every ruling. The Gombe State Independent Electoral Commission says it is prepared to conduct credible elections in the 11 local government areas of Gombe State in April of this year. This was revealed by the chairman of the State Electoral Commission when he received a delegation from the Alliance for Credible Democracy in his office. In Jigawa State, a group under the ages of concerned northern youth have thrown their support behind President Bola Tinubu's fight against corruption. The chairman of the group, Mr. Bashir Nasiru, stated this at a news conference in Duse, the state capital. Hello, everyone. So let's get into it. So let's get back to the conversation. First and foremost, tonight, let's deal with what is happening within the APC in Edo State. Now, we heard INEC chairman uh, yesterday. He spoke about uh, the primaries in the different political parties in Edo and governorship elections. But this is what happened in Edo State. The APC there had said the, the 29 persons who have... Uh, thrown their heart in the ring. The number is too much, and they wanted to prune it down. So they asked Professor Julius Inovera to lead a committee, and they extracted different persons from the different local uh, senatorial district to sit on that committee and screen people out. And uh, everyone will agree to the number of people that will eventually go into the race. But at the end of the day, the number came to about six, although a lot of people debate. And some say four, some say ten, some say six. Well, whichever the number is, there are those who disagree with that committee. And they said, look, they will go ahead and exercise their franchise, obtain the form, and they will run in the race despite what the professor in home very committee has agreed on. One of those you will perhaps not forget in the Edo governorship race is my guest tonight. Um, he's uh, Pastor Osage. He's a Yamu. That's how, uh, pop, I mean, uh, he's popularly known. Pastor, that's what he's popularly known. Well, he's a pastor. We've had this debate in the past before. <laughs> this is our saga. He's a Yamu joins us live from Benin City. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sheo. Thank you. Nice yes, to have me here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, I know whichever, if you've been in the other part, political party, PDP, you've been in the APC, and now you ran in the last uh, election against Governor Baseki. But uh, the professor in your very committee, you were there from what I understand in that meeting preceding the work of that committee. And you were those, one of those who agreed 
uh, that whatever be the outcome of that committee, you abide with it. But we understand now that you've obtained your form. Is that right? No, correct. I'm uh, proud to say that uh, today my friends went to the National Secretariat and uh, uh, Oh dear. It seems uh, we're experiencing some glitch in, uh, in the connection with uh, Mr. Ozage Izayama, who is a frontline uh, governorship aspirant in the APC in Edo State. And of course, he's not the only person. The likes of um, uh, Honorable Anamero Dekeri, we understand, he's also of, uh, he has been uh, similar to what uh, Mr. Izayama is telling us tonight has gotten his own nomination for me. He said also that he doesn't believe and he's going at it, insisting that he will run in the race. Uh, the man popularly called Danko is a sitting member of the uh, House uh, of Representatives. Uh, if uh, Mr. Osage Zeyamu is back with us, uh, please go ahead. There seems to be uh, a break in, in the connection earlier. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Oh dear. Uh, the, the connection says no tonight, but we will keep trying and let's get the perspectives of uh, Mr. Izayamu on, what, on the state of the race. But let's flip the conversation now and talk about the state of the nation. Yesterday you heard Senator Aline Dume on this program speaking and reacting to the decision of uh, some agencies of government such as the CBN and, the, and FAN under the aviation ministry planning uh, for logistics administrative issues to relocate some units and department in those agencies to lagos and uh, nearer and closer to uh, their operations but it's gotten some reaction and he's warned that the president needs to be careful because this is highly political and that this may cost him dearly and i'm being joined by a former Minister of Communication, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, he joins us live here in Abuja Studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Shitu, for joining it's us tonight. Pleasure. Yeah. The president is uh, out of the country today, yeah. and uh, there are those who uh, who say Plateau is on fire. Uh, maybe not literally, uh, but Mango is uh, under attack. And uh, the president said he's away on private uh, uh, that those who are critics of the president, who is, is it the right time? It's coinciding with the, <laughs> the clan coffee or a place like that. Why uh, do we call governors the chief security officers of their states? If uh, the president must himself be physically there. And the president, the chief security officer of the nation? Look, he is a, com he is a commander in chief of the armed forces. Mm -hmm. And you know how many people are in the armed forces of Nigeria? At least, the, I mean, they cannot be less than half a million. So it doesn't matter if the president is around matter. or not. The president, wherever he is, he is the president and commander in chief. I mean, we should not, it's not a very personal thing. We have the chief security officer of the state who already has been taking action. He's the one who imposed, you know, it's 24 hour, you know, uh, coffee. And is relying on the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under the commandership of Mr. President. He has all the support of You're Mr. You're one President. of those who spoke so loudly for a Bola Tinobu presidency. But in the, the spate of insecurity and the rise <laughs> in the criminal activities and violent activities <laughs> that we've seen in the past weeks, <laughs> what do you tell those who you have, uh, you have boldly told and yeah. you have campaigned to that these things will be fixed. You it's see, about seven, eight you months see, after this, this, the this swearing. This security situation did, did, did not begin today. It well, you said you have solution. You said you have solution. You need time to solve the problem. But people are dying. No, people are dying, but the, we must be charitable to members of the armed forces and the police who are sacrificing their own lives to confront, you know, these... You know, the, the, the bandits. The question is, are we doing the, the right forest? thing uh, with, I, within the time space that we have? Anybody who has better information or better expertise should come out to say it because Nigeria belongs to all of us. 
The problem is not the president, the problem of Mr. President alone. It's not that of the armed forces alone. The channels of communication are always open, and anybody who has better ideas should come forward. Let me tell you, there's no Nigerian who does not have a representative in the National Assembly. When you talk of the federal government, it is made up of three arms, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. And to that extent, if you cannot reach Mr. President, you cannot reach the armed forces. You have your representatives, either in the House of Representatives or in the Senate. We can pass information to them. I want to believe that the members of the armed forces who have been on the front line must be commended and must not be discouraged. They must not be demoralized. I mean, we are the first here to commend them because they are doing a very difficult job. They are doing job. a human's job, of and course. At, at, at that rate, yeah. uh, you know, you cannot also uh, say that People who are dying, you cannot <laughs> uh, put to task those who promise that they will, they have the solution job, to the insecurity problem. And job. the president has said, look, <laughs> I have conversed for yeah, both. I yeah. promised I would do yeah. it. I and, beg for the job. And he's doing it. The question is, people are dying. It, it, look, it, it's unfortunate that it's, people are dying. Yes. Look, when people are kidnapped, the armed forces can go into the bush and start shooting everybody. But there will be collateral damages. And do you want an eye service of an action? But we thought that there was a, there was a playbook. We thought that there, there was a grand plan. That this the grand plan to is to on. get the armed forces encouraged, to get them equipped, to give them all the resources that they will require to confront bandits. And I can tell you, in the, south, in the northwest, a lot of soldiers are in the bush. Spending weeks there. But what Home is it that we do not know, Mr. Shito? You've been in the, government. You see, yes. What is it that we do not know that is making, that is escalating this insecurity? You see, this is a long, this thing has been generating over time. I am told, reliably, that insecurity in the Northwest in particular is a kind of rebellion against the established order of leadership and followership. Our late mentor and political leader, Yorubalan, Baba, late Obafemi Ayolo, once said, if you refuse to educate the children of the poor, they would ensure that your own children, who must have been well-educated, cannot sleep with both their two eyes closed. You can, the type of thing is, that is happening in the Northwest, you cannot find it in Southwest. Because education has been given the right priority and it has been universalized. In the North, unfortunately, the situation is not the same. That is one. The second reason I am told, you know, which, you know, aggravates the situation of this government is that over the years, the Fulanese believe that what on the, the, whatever they do or do not do, their cattle are seized from them by the establishment, their wives are, are taken over, they are put in prison for, you know, a lot of things that they may not believe that they have done. And this thing has continued over decades. And they got to a say where they felt, you know, a sense of rebellion, well, that they are also human beings. They don't have education, they don't have anything to lie. And they are being oppressed with due respect to those who must have been involved or who may think that what I'm saying would affect them directly or indirectly. So it's a kind of rebellion. That is why you find young people who decide to go and live in the bush, in the forest, because they have nothing doing. And these, you are not talking of 10,000 people. You are not talking of 20,000 people. They are in hundreds of thousands who do not see any hope in life except that they want to take a pound of flesh on the rest of society. So I would think the starting point is for government, both at the national level, federal level, and the state level, is to impose or establish free education at all levels so that it becomes an offense for anybody to refuse to send his children to school. Mr. Shizu, just for a moment, let me allow, there was a stakeholders, uh, the, the leaders of the North uh, met today. Uh, in that meeting, I'd like you to listen to some of the submissions today. Maybe we can start by proffering some solutions to help our nation because the sad story here is that any person that is killed today, 
A woman is a wife of somebody, a daughter to somebody, uh, and is a wife to somebody. He, the man killed today is a child to somebody and is a father to somebody. Take a listen to um, Professor Atairu Jaga and, of course, a former Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ogbe. This chaos is caused by the three things. One, the economy. Two, the economy. And three, the economy. <laughs> there are no rural industries. So there are no jobs. So our children graduate, hang around the village for a while, and they have to go in frustration. They go into crime, into the forest, into kidnapping, where they can call a poor man and his children, take them to the bush and ask for 50 million. It doesn't connect. Rather than continue to promote the phenomenon of uh, vigilantes in our communities, perhaps we may as well go back and uh, get the constitution appropriately amended so that we have formal institutions of state policing. You know, because those will be formal, they will be easier to monitor, easier to discipline, easier to control, and easier to actually train appropriately for the fight, not just against insurgency, but also for longer term uh, law and order provisioning and uh, peaceful coexistence in our communities. The way the phenomenon of vigilantes is going, uh, uh, frankly, it's, in fact, we need to start applying the brakes. Otherwise, it may now become another monster that can get out of control in no time uh, uh, in our communities. All right. Those are some of the thoughts of those speakers at that roundtable conversation about the state of this nation. Uh, I would like you to comment also, but also I'd like you to listen to uh, to these uh, two leaders, uh, former heads of state, Abu Salami Abubakar and the Sultan of Sokoto, Sahad Abubakar. Take a listen to them. Certainly, a lot has been discussed and said about insecurity. There are volumes of literature that abound in this country. So I hope that at the end of this article, we will implement the recommendations. We in Nigeria, in particular, do not like proposals, issues, knowledge of how and where we should bring solutions to our problems. What we lack is implementation. Those are the thoughts today shared. Economy issues, state policing issues, and these are thought leaders in the North who are proffering solutions into the insecurity situation. But if there is something and one thing that you think that the president can capitalize on in stemming the tide of it, this insecurity, because the manner in which it's going, it looks like everyone is confused yeah. about the situation of things. What do you think that the president needs to be doing immediately? Well, the president needs to get all governors, all senior leaders, particularly in the North talking. What is what doing at all is what is doing well. And so the issue of insecure, fighting insecurity is an issue that will continue to malign the integrity of the presidency. And I have suggested that the first point is to ensure that everybody has access to education, every child in this country. That is the way you would not be allowing insurgents to be able to get people to recruit into your fold. People who have hope of life who certainly not prefer to live in the bush. It is when people become so desperate that they know things are so hopeless that they resort to taking arms. Even in Lagos, two weeks ago, somebody was on tape saying that if the economic situation does not improve within two months, he's going to take up arms. That was in Lagos. I mean, so the economic issue is very crucial. And so where you are able to ensure education is available, the next thing is to provide skills training for people. Even those who are not educated now can be able to take in, you know, can be taken through skills training. Wherever there's hope, there would be life. But when people are left in a hopeless situation, 
about their lives, about their future. So the thing is, they would want to resort. So, I mean, uh, you, don't you think that there is a, uh, less and less trust of, of the people in government and some of you who are political leaders because they think that you have failed them severally? Well, the truth is also this. I mean, I know a lot of people are getting this funding, but we must also appreciate that these things did not start today. Nobody in his right senses, for instance, will say that it is Bola Ahmed Tinubu that, you know, created the insecurity situation we are in. This but the, the, the Buhari government promised that it's going to wipe out insecurity. But you see, you will ATS. recall... You will recall Although Mr. Adeshina was saying that you didn't mean what you said no, about, uh, no, about no, no. you saying that Buhari does not... Uh, in, I never made any reference to, any negative reference to Buhari in regard to insecurity. The truth about Buhari's handling of insecurities, when he came on board, the only problem of insecurity was in the Northeast, the Boko Haram thing. Before he came on board, 24 local governments in the Northeast were effectively under the control of Boko Haram. But within two or three years, he eliminated that. He got people, you know, resettled in their homes. He got, you know, the 24 local governments liberated and, you know, there was... But we had so many other insecurity situations you see, almost across all the parts of the country. You know, but is it government that is bringing about this? But government has promised that it's going to... Yeah, but they have it. always... There's no government time is responsible is, to secure the people. Let me tell you, you see... Isn't are, that a failure the, in some sense? The crisis about insecurity is about war against... A war of soft targets. Criminals will never give notice that they are going to strike anywhere. So there's no way to prepare for... What's the place of in intelligence? An intelligence gathering. You, you, you would, uh, you would, you know, ask in the security forces, not the president. But the, the president, the, the president's are, role, control. the president's role, is to provide whatever they need. Dead. And you would also agree with me that the gunboats that the military before Buhari never got to buy during Buhari's time, more than ten of such were acquired. Even now, that acquisition. Mm -hmm. Of more gun boats, you know, is going to Because I mean, I have also, the, also said, yeah, you yeah. see, when you are fighting insecurity, remember that some innocent people are in the custody of these criminals. If you just, you know, think it is about a kinetic war, about a physical, you know, bombing, those who are victims of insecurity will also get bombed. I mean, you, you, you I mean, there's a reference when Mr. Femi Adishino was here on the launch of his book. And I, I, I reference what you said about the style of leadership of Buhari. That just gives you an appoint, appointment, but he never even check on you. But even have, if you don't, if you I, don't. But I have also stated with, the, with regard to insecurity that he did very well by liberating the, all the local governments in the North East Sutra, then on that book. But I mean, you, that's certainly... You, you, are not, you are not changing the, uh, the, the fact that Buhari will give you responsibility and we'll we never check he, on him. He, he gives responsibilities, but he's, he's not too, he, he, I mean, with due respect, he's not very effective in supervision. Administratively, I'm saying now. Mm -hmm. Not about the war. Of course, the, the war commanders are answerable to him. And I believe they were always holding, you know, meetings with him to chart new courses and to make their demand. We have never heard of any complaint from the armed forces about they being you know, short chain with regard to, you know, their requirements for the ongoing insecurity war. Let me get your view. Senator Alin Dumi on this program spoke about uh, the relocation and he reacted to it of uh, some departments and agencies of government to Lagos. And he, he was warning the president about that he might have some political <laughs> implication. What are your views? Well, Alin Dumi is, is my very good friend and I respect his intelligence and, uh, you know, the spirit of nationalism. But I want to say with due respect to him, I know a number of Northerners are taking this issue too personal. Look, Nigeria, the central bank being in Abuja, it's not in Abuja because Abuja is in the north. It's in Abuja because Abuja is the capital of Nigeria, and to that extent, Abuja belongs to all of us. For instance, nobody can drive any person away from Abuja. If any agency of government finds it convenient for administrative purposes to relocate any department, why must it be tribalized? Why must it be, you know, made, you know, an issue of north-south dichotomy? 
I think it is rather unfortunate and it, it, it does not speak well of those who see this as perhaps, I mean, can if wherever the, 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 any department of government is, can any body of any tribe be prevented from assessing it? So you think it's okay? I, uh, I think so. I think so. And it's rather petty. Well, how do you better. then douse the tension for those who think that this no, is need to, they need to be educated and to be reminded that Nigeria belongs to all of us. At our level, at the level of Senate, at the level of National Assembly, at the level of uh, ministers, we should think as Nigerians. We should not, you know, be, you know, too, you know, clannish, you know, if I may use the word. I think it is unfair and... Uh, I mean, you wouldn't expect that it will be the president who will say, you, uh, governor of Central Bank, take uh, one department. He, who would have as well, if that were feasible or possible, he would have well say they take uh, the Abuja back to, to whatever. Is, they, these are departments, and for administrative purposes, any part of Nigeria would remain home right. to every department. Of let, let, let's take a break now, Mr. Shido. Um, I understand now that we have... Uh, Mr. Osage Ize Yamu back with us. I guess that some of the technical issues have since been resolved. Well, we take a breather. But when we come back, we'll speak uh, with Mr. Osage Ize Yamu. And I have a former Minister of Communication still with me, Mr. Adebayo Shito. Stay with me, everyone. We'll be right back. Ask myself one question. What does education mean to you? Education is the tool to shape my future, fostering critical thinking and problem solving skills. Philma University City Campus, Maitama Abuja, is now open. Visit www.philomat.edu.ng to get started. In today's world, our lifestyle, both at work and at play, depends on connectivity. Our connectivity depends on the devices that make it possible, and these devices depend on electric power. When power fails, our life shrinks, our work drops, and our joy dips. JRB Solar Energy Systems are here to ensure that we enjoy uninterruptible power, uninterruptible joy. Whether you're running a business, an institution, or just a home, you return daily to rest. JRB has got you covered. No project is too big for our super digital inverters, long-lasting batteries, and efficient solar panels. Go. Dream on. Change your world. JRB Solar Inverters, Batteries, Solar Panels, Solar Street Lights and more. Telephone 0906 752 Email sales at jrbsolar.com. With JRB, the sun's gonna shine on everything you do. A former Minister of Communication, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, has been speaking with us on uh, issues on the bordering on the state of the nation. Earlier on, you know, we started a conversation with a frontline aspirant in the Edo APC governorship race, Osage Izeyamu, is with us now. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Osage Izeyamu, a popularly called pastor. You will tell me that uh, you are actually a pastor, but then... <laughs> well, let's get back to the conversation. Um, so... I was asking you, uh, you said you've obtained the form, but you, it looks like you despise the Professor Inover Committee report. Why? Well, uh, Sheon, again, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I know that uh, you become an expert on uh, procedures for primaries and elections, and you know that you don't screen people who have not even indicated interest to run for office. It's not just by going on social media to say that uh, I'm an aspirant. To be an aspirant, you have to pay for expression of interest form and a collect nomination form. That is what makes you an aspirant. The party APC is very well organized. We have a timetable, and there's a timetable for screening. Screening comes after you have paid your nomination form, you have collected your expression of interest form, which we have just done. After that, you submit and then the party, the National Working Committee, we constitute a committee 
to screen the hospitals. So certainly we've not got in there. So it's ridiculous to refer to Inyobere's committee, which was in-house as a screening committee. I'm sure if you invite him, he would uh, be very hesitant to give him that title because the only people that could have named that committee a screening committee is the National Working Committee, and they've not done so. They have a timetable that will be done in February. So, but with what is going on, uh, me, so, and I put this question to you earlier, you were one of those who are in that meeting with the leader of your party in Edo State, Comrade Adam Soshiamale, and all of you subscribe to the Professor in your various committee, and you agreed to the, to the, uh, to the dictate of that committee's uh, 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 terms of reference, which you said you will abide by. But now the committee has finished its work, and some of you are speaking against that committee's work. Is that fair? Sheung, I can tell you for a fact that uh, I was at the so-called meeting. And at no time was that committee referred to as a screening committee. If I were to quote what uh, our leader, Comrade Adam Sushomoli, said, he said, I would like to suggest that a committee be set up to interface with the aspirants with a view of uh, making a recommendation. Number one, he used the word interface. He did not say screening. Number two, he talked about recommendation. He did not say decision. And in any event, that matter has been laid to rest. Because when they were beginning to have doubts about who they even screened and they did not screen, the national in their wisdom told the national police secretary to issue a statement that one, as many as want to collect forms should please do so. Number two, they are the only ones who can constitute a screening committee. And that will only be done when forms have been submitted. Forms will be submitted on the 29th of January. We've not even got in there. There are people who might still want to contest that we don't even know, and they have a right. Nobody can stop them. So that's why I said it would be ridiculous for anybody to say that what we had was a screening. It was not a screening committee. Those who say so may be saying so out of inexperience. But for people like us who have been in the game, it would have been ridiculous. And if you are going to screen people, it's not something you do arbitrarily. They are laid down procedures. In fact, court cases have long decided that if you are going to disqualify anybody at all, it must be based on the constitutional provision for disqualification. Nothing else. It's not an arbitrary exercise. And I can tell you that what we went through was just an interface with the committee set up to make a recommendation. A recommendation is not a decision. And uh, that matter has been laid to rest. Even the Edo APC have long issued a statement that what happened in that place was just an in-house committee that was set up. It has nothing to do with screening. But Mr. Uh, it yeah. was said at, this, at that meeting uh, that the, the, the committee is coming together with the intent of pruning from 29 to a reasonable number that could go into the primaries. Didn't it say that? No, no, no. Let, let, let me explain to you. It was said that it will not be nice and advisable for all of us to go and collect the forms. 29 of us will be like almost giving uh, 1.5 billion to the national. And so he said any discussion that would help to reduce the number will be okay. And that if we don't mind, a committee can tell us to make a recommendation. Now, if you are saying that statement is what gave them the status of the screening committee, I will tell you no. Because the screening committee is a body that can only be set up by the National Working Committee. We've not got in there at all. And you know, when you talk about this committee, for example, on what basis are they screening people? What basis? I don't want to, I'm a party man, so I don't want to even go into uh, a lot of the things that we did because it's been laid to rest. But the reality is that if we were to talk about that so called committee, you will find out that whatever they did cannot even stand the test of time. But in any event, the party has long overruled on it. The national has spoken against it. The state has spoken against it. Then what, what are we talking about? If the state condemns it, the national condemns it, then it means that there's no issue. So I can tell you that I have the greatest respect for the party. And if the party in this wisdom sets up a committee, the party will enforce it. Who is enforcing this one, for example? And even when the party sets up a screening committee, I hope you also know too that they would also set up an appeal committee if anybody is aggrieved with the result of the screening committee, they have a right to appeal. So all those procedures are there, you know, clearly enshrined in our party constitution. We've not gotten there yet. When we get there, we'll cross it. So, so the, that committee that was initiated by your leader, Comrade Adam Soshiomale, 
as it will be called in some uh, local parlance, is now become a political aborted baby, is it? Well, <laughs> their, job, their job was to make a recommendation. A recommendation is a recommendation. You know, you listen to it, you can accept it, and uh, you can reject it. But uh, if, if, if I'll be very honest with you, I would have thought really that what we were expecting was, number one, do we want to zone or not? You know, because that is a recommendation. Number two, what criteria do we want to use to reduce the number? But the issue of screening, like I said, it's not, it's not their job. With due respect to Comedada and Social Molly, it's not the national chairman of the party. He cannot on his own decide to set up a screening committee. He was national chairman. He will not take it from anybody who will attempt to usurp the functions of a national working committee. So I don't want to go into it because the party has sufficiently laid it to rest. It's like trying to flog a dead horse. He's dead, he's dead. You know, what is important now is that we've come out, and even in your statement, I remember you saying that now the heavyweights have come out. Which serious party? Which serious party will disqualify their serious contenders? Are we, are we going to do the contest to lose? So I want to assure you that whatever happened there was uh, an in-house thing, which we, don't, which, which we have not taken seriously, and we have moved on to the real business of paying for forms. It's those who pay for forms that become aspirants. Uh, the people uh, you are talking about before... Mr. Isaiah, if I may jump in quickly and ask you, uh, I mean, it, it is beyond, it goes beyond saying that the mm. influence and the role and Adams Oshomale will play as a leader of the party will in, uh, invariably determine who becomes the, uh, the bearer of the ticket of the APC in Edo State. Uh, for those who mm, think I... that Ize Yamu is not on good terms with Adam Sashomale, do you think, in some sense, politically speaking, that your ambition might be impaired from the on-go, I mean, from the set go? No, no, no. no, no number one, I'll tell you categorically that we are on good terms. There's no quarrel between myself and Comrade Adam Sashomale. We have worked closely throughout uh, the party formation to begin to quarrel unnecessarily. But the fact that we disagree does not mean that it's a problem. He is a strong, he has a strong personality. I also have that. So we are bound to disagree. He doesn't expect me to sit down and everything he says, I will say yes. So the fact that we disagree on some issues does not make us enemies. For example, the son is getting married this weekend. I'm going. I'm going to travel from Bini to Lagos just to attend. In the same way, when my daughter was getting married, he was there. So we have a good relationship, but politically, we can decide to disagree on how to go by the process. And let me also say this. Let me also say this. The issue of who becomes a candidate is not a decision for one man. Comrade Adam Sochomole is highly respected in our party. But even him will not tell you that I will decide who will be. He will not say that. He will not say that. And if but, he says that kind of thing... But, 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 but do, you, do, do you fear, though, that if you are not seen in Edo State today, especially within your party, APC, as a favored candidate... And those who are also who have some uh, uh, bones to pick with you, based on how the election of the last time you were on the ballot went, and they thought that you might not be the right you candidate see, for the uh, APC. Xion, Do you have uh, some fears? To the glory of God, we have seen a lot of things in politics. Our president, Asiwajubola Metunubu, our president Asiwajubola Metunubu, went through a highly contested presidential primaries. And in that primaries, you will recall, the then the national chairman said the preferred candidate of the party is Ahmed Lawal. In spite of that, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu still won. So at the end of the day, the beauty about democracy is that the people will take a decision. If the people in their wisdom say, Pastor Isaiah Yabu, we don't want it to be a candidate. I'm a party man who will support whoever becomes a candidate. So it's not a question about desperation. The fact that our contesting does not preclude any other person from contesting. And nobody too can stop me if I'm qualified to contest. If Comrade supports me, that will be a plus. What if, if he doesn't, doesn't support, support me, you? That will be a challenge. What if he doesn't support if you? He doesn't, it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory, it supports me all the time. Of course, I know that the moment I become a candidate, he will support me.
But the, 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 the there are those who feel in your party that you don't have the support of Adam Sushamali. Isn't, isn't that well, a problem? The truth, the, truth, the truth about it is that I'm reaching out to all our stakeholders. We have 192 words. Comrade has not told me he's not supporting me. Of course, as uh, one of our foremost leaders, I went to him to say, look, I'm going to contest. What do you think? He said, you know, if you want to go, go for it. So the truth about it is that I have no personal disagreement with him. Whether he will support me, he will not support me, it's his personal choice, and I will respect that. I cannot even be angry with him if he chooses to support, support, support somebody else. It doesn't matter. But for the, that those who say that, that if, at he, the end if of he decides to, just remember that. In 192 words, yeah, if, if there are those who, who say, in 2020, uh, decided. yeah, Mr. Isaiah, there are those who say, in 2020, you are somewhat being imposed, or, well, so they say, in your party, by Comrade Adam Sushamale, but if he doesn't support you this time around, you should not uh, um, have any qualms in that sense because no, in the same no. way... Uh, you see, you see, you see, you see, let me tell you, in 2020, yes, they tried to talk to some people to step down for me, but that was not correct. When you have a consensus candidate, it means that all the other aspirants, aspirants who took forms, signs to support you. They withdraw and say they are supporting you. Then that makes you the sole candidate, a consensus candidate. In my case, in 2020, people contested with me. So I was not a consensus candidate. We did primaries. So I was not a consensus candidate. So the reality is that people can talk to We are talking uh, among ourselves. I'm talking to many of the aspirants to step down for me. And some have come to me to say, Pastor, please support me. It's normal. There's nothing wrong in it. Those are the hallmarks of contestation. There's nothing wrong with it. But at the end of the day, we will do primaries. And the primaries will separate the men from the boys. In one ninety two words, if I am defeated, I would accept. If I also win, I expect that they would accept. So basically, there's no problem. Our party has fixed the date, the 17th of February. That day we'll do primaries, direct primaries. We are ready for it. I have gone around the 18, uh, the 18 local governments, which means I am not waiting for one particular person to endorse me. If I thought I needed one particular person to endorse me, I will stay in this house all through. I will not go around. I have gone around the 18 local government. My presence is felt all over the state and in the 192 wards. All right. And I tell you for free, and everybody will tell you that pastor is the man to beat. All right. Let me, let me quickly take beat. you up on this. Your brother... Mm -hmm. Godwin Obaseki is from the same senatorial district. Uh, and there are those who think that after an eight years of Godwin Obaseki, would you have another man from the same senatorial district, from the same stock, become governor again or get a ticket of the APC? Would that be called fairness in the political game of the Edo state? That's a, that's a nice question you've asked. Well, you see, People do not understand the demography of our state. Godwin Obaseki is from Moredo. That's where the state capital is. That's the same local government that Lockheed Millennium was from. But that is not the whole of Edo South. Edo South has seven local governments. Oredo is the capital and the urban side of Edo South. I am from the rural side of Edo South. I come from Oriomo. And listen to me. Oriomo has never had a governor. We have never had a minister. We have never had, a, what do you call it, a, a chairman of a party. We have never had a, a speaker. Whatever position we've never had. That's a local government that has no light, no water, no hospital, no higher institution. And yet, yet, it has the largest land mass in the entire state. That is the local government that has the highest gas reserve in the entire country. And yet, no water, nothing. Totally backward. My people, too, don't you think they have a right to agitate and say, our son, please contest? There is no senatorial district that has not had governor one time or the other. There's none. And for me, there is nothing wrong in anybody agitating. Everybody, they have a right to agitate. And the real essence why you are seeing this rampant agitation is because of the glaring underdevelopment in every area. 
And everybody now believes that the only way they can develop their place is when their son becomes governor. It's a legitimate thing. There's no doubt about it. The young people are aggrieved. Even the Asian area, they will tell you that the Okpewo people have had their fair share. But like Basilo, they've not had their share. But I'm telling you that in my own uh, Edo start you are talking about, Oriom where I come from, they cannot boast that they have ever been considered for a governor or minister or speaker or chairman of party or the basic amenities. So on what basis do you think I will keep quiet and my people are so marginalized and they are crying out? All right, uh, I can tell you that yeah. if my party in their wisdom, if my party in their wisdom says we have decided to zone, I would abide by that. There's no way I can fight it. But before I came out, I listened carefully when people went to the party secretariat and repeatedly they mentioned the fact that they are not zoning the governorship. They are not zoning the governorship. And their reason was quite germane. You can't be in opposition and be talking about zoning. It's only when you are comfortable, you are in government, that you can say, okay, this area, they've not had government before, let us give to them. But when you are in opposition and you are fighting to come into government, what is uppermost in your mind is, who is the best person that we can present to unseat who is there? That is what is there. Let me, let me quickly won, get to Just for a moment. You contested yeah. very intensely with Mr. Godwin Abasaki in a debate that China's television uh, put together. And you contested ideas on how you think a state should be run. And uh, in, that, in, in those conversations, you thought about how you think that uh, poverty alleviation should be done, education should be done. Now, you've had a governor of Basaki for eight years. Why do you want to become governor? Why are you seeking the APC ticket? What is the fundamentals you. of your ambition of wanting to be the governor of a state? Just one thing. Thank you. That, uh, thank you. That inspires now, you. That, thank you. Now, I've had the opportunity to serve our state in an appointive capacity. By the grace of God, in the past, I've been chief of staff. I've been secretary to government. I understand the workings of government. And one thing that is obvious to me is that government can do so much. Government can develop the three senatorial districts without discrimination, irrespective of where the governor comes from. What is important is a governor who is focused, a governor who is committed, a governor who is sincere, and a governor who knows what he's doing. In my debate with Godwin Abaseki, for example, I was alarmed at the fact that you want to be your governor, want to be governor in the first term, and there's no roadmap. There's no clear-cut agenda of what you want to do. And I said, if you run on this basis, you would get there, nothing will happen. And that's what happened in the, in the, in, in the first four years. In the second four years again, I raised that alarm. I have always had a roadmap, my simple agenda. And every time I try to review it, even right now, I have reviewed it to face present realities. So clearly, I have a clear roadmap of what can be done to make our state better. And I can tell you this, if I am governor, the agitation of where you come from to rule the state will be less. Because when people see their areas well developed, when they see their people appointed on the basis of merit, Nobody will begin to say, oh, is the turn of this, is the turn of that, is the turn of that. It's ridiculous. But I don't blame them right now because there's nothing happening. They have been so marginalized. There's so much underdevelopment that everybody now believes that until their own person comes into government, there will be no redemption. All right. It's like that. Yeah. I have a blueprint. Yes. All right. we, we need to wrap up quickly now. But there are, there are those, you know, perhaps, I mean, this is probably going to be your party internal issues. But of course, you know that I talked to a whole lot of politicians in, this, in my line of duty. So there are those that you need to convince about how the campaign funds were spent when you ran for governor the last time. There are those who are asking questions about how those monies were spent. Are you able to no. give account fully on how those funds were spent? You know, you know, when people see you as the front runner, there's nothing they will not do to disparage or assassinate your character. I told you just now that I went through the 18 local governments. And it's very, very few of the aspirants have been able to do that. And everywhere I went, I had a rousing reception because they all admitted that the money that I was able to gather for the last election 
no candidate of the party has ever been able to bring that money. They give me data plus every local government. And I have the tapes. And I can how give you them spent to you it, not charge. even acquiring the money, but how it was spent. No, but how it, it was spent. How it was spent. They were, they were admitting that the money they got. Do you have a record that, money to that you can publish yes. to convince not, the naysayers? Not, not only, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's, not for, it's not for public consumption, but it will interest you to know that at every local government area, I gave them a breakdown. And what I got was more than a standing ovation. Every local government. I know you have your ears to the ground. They won't call your local people in a door. They will tell you that everywhere pastor went, you know, to dismiss this uh, silly story. He reminded them what he brought to their local government. And not only did they agree, they applauded him for what he did. But you felt, so you, you said you felt betrayed. Yes. After the election. The, 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 the betrayer, the betrayer is not coming just from me. Even a uh, uh, leader, Combinator Mushomale, has said it. So many people have said it because they saw it for themselves. You see, there are not many things you can say in the public, but I can tell you that there are people we looked up to to support us in a lot of areas. And we found out that they did anti-party. They were working for Goldwyn Obaseki. They were APC members, leaders, and they were working for him for reasons best known to them. All right. Yeah. They wanted, so, they wanted him. Yeah, they wanted him to return. We, 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 need, we, need, to, we need to anchor on that. Thank you so yeah. much, Mr. Osage Izayamuwu. Also obtained this form today, as well as other aspirants uh, like uh, Anamero Dekeri and the rest. But I wish you the very best. Uh, we monitor all the processes along the way. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. L let me get a final word from uh, Mr. Adebayo Shutu on the program today. Where do we go from here? There seems to be a lot of division in the nation under the uh, President Tunubu's uh, watch. And they're largely uh, religious, ethnic issues. How do you think the president can deal with this? Well, it's just about 67 years uh, God would advise him. God <laughs> would guide him. God would support him. Uh, let me say this. As a Muslim, I'm trained to pray for all our leaders. Because if they get it wrong, all of us will be negatively affected. So I want to appeal to everybody in this country that the best they could do for Mr. President is to keep praying for him because he's a human being like the rest of us. You know, so that is very important. You know, he needs prayers, he needs guidance of God, mm. and he needs his support. Finally, yeah. to Mr. President himself, he must take the rightful action in redeeming the local government system in this country. The local governments are under a state of comatose. Because our governors, most of our governors will not allow them to be. And yeah. nobody seems to care about mm. it. We have a three-tier federal government. How would it be if the federal government were to start compromising the resources of the states? We, we need to go. Do you feel disappointed that appointments have not been fully... Well, it will come. I mean, You've yeah. not gotten any... Well, it doesn't mean I will not get... very loud voice for... if, if, Well, I did my best. I can... I assure you. But you are hoping day. for something, isn't it? Well, if it comes, I mean, I am not jobless, but if it comes, I will see it as an opportunity right. to further contribute to national development. Thank you so much mm -hmm. indeed. Just before we close, uh, we would also like to tell you, I mean, apart from the story that Governor Ayedatiwa of Undo State has now nominated a former deputy clerk of the National Assembly as his deputy and forward the name to the House of Assembly, we also can tell you that he has now appointed a secretary to the state government, Tayo Oluwatui. And that's how we anchor tonight on the program. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye. to action on disability inclusion. Did you know that the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018 prohibits all forms of discrimination against persons with disabilities, PWDs, and includes sanctions for defaulters? It also guarantees PWDs the right to free and inclusive education up to secondary school level and requires that PWDs make up at least 5% of employees in public organizations. Persons who suffer discrimination may also institute